In our ongoing journey through dental materials, we have touched upon elasticity, viscosity, and more. Today, we're entering the intriguing realm of thermal properties. In our last session, we explored the flow and deformation of dental materials. Now, let's discuss how these materials deal with temperature fluctuations and their impact on the overall dental health. The oral cavity is no stranger to temperature changes, thanks to the hot and cold foods and drinks that we have. But did you know that even some dental materials release heat when they set? It's like a mini fireworks show inside your mouth that you don't really get to see. The dental pulp, the sensitive core of your tooth, is incredibly sensitive to temperature changes. Luckily, it's shielded by dentin and then enamel, which are decent thermal insulators. When we restore teeth, it's crucial that the materials offer not only insulation, but also minimal temperature rise while setting. We don't want your dental work to roast your pulp, right? So thermal conductivity is like the speed at which temperature changes travel. Some materials are speed demons, conducting heat quickly, while others are more sluggish. Dental materials vary in thermal conductivity. Metals and alloys conduct heat more quickly than polymers like acrylic resin. Dental amalgam is an example that isn't a good thermal insulator. You must have heard about it. But there's another player in town, the thermal diffusivity. It tells us how materials respond to quick temperature changes like sipping hot coffee. How quickly does the material diffuse that heat through itself and towards the pulp? We calculate thermal diffusivity using thermal conductivity, heat capacity, and density. It's like looking at how a material handles a sudden temperature surprise. When you take a sip of a cold drink, the thermal diffusivity helps us calculate the temperature change in your dental pulp. We want this change to be as gentle as possible. We measure thermal diffusivity by dunking material samples into hot or cold liquids with embedded thermocouples. A rapid response indicates a high diffusivity, while a small, slow response means it's not so great. Some dental materials are known for their exothermic reactions. These reactions generate heat during setting. Different materials produce different levels of temperature rise during setting. These numbers get bigger as the amount of material increases. So you can imagine why we need to watch out for them. Coefficient of thermal expansion is like a puzzle piece. When the puzzle fits, it's great. But if the piece is too different, a small gap can form. In the dental world, that gap is bad news. Dental materials need to match the coefficient of thermal expansion with the tooth substance to minimize the gaps. For some materials like silicate cements, it's a perfect match. Others like acrylic resin don't quite fit the puzzle. But remember, reality isn't always that simple. Coefficient of thermal expansion is an equilibrium property and the actual expansion depends on a combination of factors. In practice, a low value of thermal diffusivity coupled with a matching coefficient of thermal expansion is the dream combo for dental materials. And there you have it, a journey through thermal properties in dental materials. From protecting your dental pulp from temperature changes to ensuring dental materials behave as they should, if you found this easy to digest, hit the like button, share, and subscribe. Keep those questions coming, stay curious, and let's explore more dental wonders together. Until next lecture, this is Dr. Shake signing off.